Biography John Adams was a prominent politician, lawyer, diplomat, and one of the founding fathers of the United States of America who participated in drafting the Declaration of Independence. He won the election in 1796 and became George Washington's successor as President of the United States. Childhood and Youth John Adams was born on October 30, 1735, on the family farm in Braintree, Massachusetts. His mother, Susanna Boylston, belonged to a family of Brooklyn doctors, and his father, John Adams Sr., a Puritan by birth, served as a deacon of the local parish, combining church duties with work as a clogmaker and lieutenant of militia. After the birth of his first child, the parent accepted a position as a city councilor and became involved in school and road construction. There were three children in the Adams family. From childhood, John Jr. honored family traditions based on stern Puritan principles. He received an elementary education at a school for boys and girls, and then studied Latin, rhetoric, logic, and arithmetic at an institution called the Braintree Latin School. At the age of 16, Adams entered Harvard College and became interested in ancient Greek literature, and after receiving his bachelor's degree, he took a teaching job at a school in Worcester, Massachusetts. Soon, the young man, dreaming of becoming a great man, thought about a more prestigious profession and decided to study law. In 1758, John received a bachelor's degree in law and was admitted to the Bar Association. He became famous thanks to the case of the Boston Massacre, managing to justify six soldiers who opened fire on the inhabitants of the city in self-defense. In 1763, Adams entered politics and published seven denunciatory essays in Boston newspapers under the pseudonym Humphrey Plowjogger, Politics. Adams' political biography began with criticism of the law that required colonies to pay a direct tax on stamped documents, which went to finance Britain's war with France. In 1765, John sent a letter to Braintree's representatives in the Massachusetts legislature, instructing them to protect the colonial rights of the citizens of American towns. To the same subject, he devoted several articles published in a Boston newspaper. In 1772, Adams advocated the independence of the legislative and judicial system of America from British payments. And two years later, he was elected a delegate from Massachusetts to the American Congress. The man supported the status of America as a British colony, but soon his views changed, and he joined the supporters of independence. Since 1775, Adams was the head of the military administration. In parallel, he headed 25 committees, which was an unrivaled workload among congressmen. In 1776, John believed that America was moving too slowly toward emancipation. He continued to work in the legislature, helping to promote a plan to equip armed ships to conduct raids on British vessels. In the middle of the year, Adams drafted the first set of rules governing the U.S. Provisional Navy and supported the Colonial Freedom Resolution. At the same time, John became a member of a five-member committee charged with drafting a Declaration of Independence, the first draft of which was debated in Congress on July 1, 1776. The document was unanimously approved and passed it on second reading on July 4, 1776, after revisions made by Adams. In 1777, John traveled to France as part of an American delegation that was to conclude a treaty of trade and military support with the mainland country. Unlike the other envoys, Adams received no instructions regarding the negotiations and was left disappointed by the visit. In mid-1780, John was sent to Holland, which was sympathetic to the former British colony. Adams was empowered as a loan negotiator, but representatives of the host country refused to meet with him. Two years later, thanks to his efforts and the defeat of the British at Yorktown, the Dutch general states recognized American independence and concluded a treaty of friendship and commerce. The house Adams purchased in Amsterdam became the first United States embassy on foreign soil. From 1785, Adams served as the American ambassador to Great Britain. His work was complicated by the failure of both countries to fulfill their treaty obligations. The American states were unable to pay debts to British traders, and in return, the British refused to vacate forts in the Northwest. John's attempts to resolve the dispute were unsuccessful. He resigned as ambassador and returned home where a presidential election was soon to be held. On February 4, 1789, George Washington became the head of the young nation. Adams, who received half as many votes, took the post of vice president and at first played an insignificant role in the new government. The situation changed after the outbreak of the French Revolution in 1789, which Adams called a triumph of tyranny and barbarism. 
Washington, who held a similar viewpoint, began to consult his vice president more frequently. In 1796, Washington's administration became divided, leading to the formation of the Federalist and Republican parties, each of which nominated its own candidate for the Supreme Office. The Republican favorite was Thomas Jefferson, while the Federalist leader was the former vice president. The election campaign of both candidates was a foolish and wicked game and was limited to denunciations in newspapers and pamphlets. John Adams eventually outplayed his opponent and was sworn in as the second president of the United States on March 4, 1797. He carried on the tradition of George Washington and ignored political patronage in favor of civic virtue. Nevertheless, his years in office were marked by political crises and conflicts. Adams' accomplishments included the creation of the U.S. Navy and the introduction of the 11th Amendment to the Constitution. He was also the first president to live in the executive mansion, now known as the White House. Throughout his term, Vice President Thomas Jefferson tried to undermine the credibility of the head of state and eventually beat his rival in the election of 1800. Adams retired from politics and went to live in Massachusetts. The former president never criticized the ideas of his successor, a role assumed by his son, John Quincy, elected to the Senate in 1803. In 1812, the differences between Adams and Jefferson were forgotten, and former colleagues in the government began a friendly correspondence, excerpts of which have been quoted. Personal Life In the late 1750s, Adams fell in love with Hannah Quincy and wanted to propose to her, but he was prevented by friends, and the moment was lost. In 1759, a friend introduced John to 15-year-old Abigail Smith. Adams was initially unimpressed with the girl, writing that she was neither loving nor frank. Over time, however, the young people grew closer and were married on October 25, 1764. The couple was happy in their personal lives. John and his wife possessed an equally sharp mind and a well-developed intellect, which they displayed in praising and criticizing each other. Upon the death of his father in 1761, Adams inherited the farm and house where the family lived until 1783. John and Abigail had five children, Nabby, John Quincy, Susanna, Charles, and Thomas. The spouses lost their middle daughter at the age of one year. The boys became lawyers, but the youngest became addicted to alcohol and died early. A short time later, breast cancer was the cause of Suzanne's death. The only survivor and most successful was Adams's second son, John Quincy, who began a career in politics and became the sixth president of the United States in 1825. Death John Adams lived to a profound old age. On the eve of the 50th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, he gave a speech on the fate of America and its citizens. At that moment, no one suspected that death was about to catch up with the great politician. On July 4, 1826, the day of the adoption of the most important document in the history of the country, the second president of the United States died in his own house in Queens. Interesting is the fact that John's political opponent, Thomas Jefferson, died a few hours earlier in Charlottesville.